Kojirako Jaga de Punch 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 Today's special guest speaker is kaiju artist Nick Shev, who's going to share his thoughts over my drawing. To see Nick's own incredible artwork, please wait until the end of the video, or simply visit the links posted below. Take it away, Nick! Hey there all you kaiju kids, I'm Nick Shev. Illustrator, weirdo, kaiju enthusiast, and own worst critic. Some of you may know me on Instagram as Art of Shev. If you follow me, thank you. And if you don't, I'd really appreciate it if you did. Anyway, I was asked here today to talk about the kaiju known as Megalon. When nuclear testing devastates the undersea kingdom of Seatopia, they unleash their mighty protector, Megalon, to seek revenge on the surface world in his first and only film appearance, 1973's Godzilla vs. Megalon. This movie, like many of the Godzilla films of the 70s, is hit or miss among fans. You either love it for all of its over-the-top cheese, or hate it for those very same reasons. And this is one of only two Godzilla movies ever to get the Mystery Science Theater 3000 treatment. Fans of this movie, though, they're very passionate. Most grew up watching it. This was a movie that was readily available on TV, cable, or any variety of videotapes. I think the US cut was public domain for a while, so many home video companies at the time had this movie in one way or another. Anytime I had gone to a theater that was showing a weekend of Godzilla movies, Megalon was always the most popular and had the best crowd. If you've never seen this movie before, and it, if it ever plays at a theater near you, I highly recommend seeing it in that environment for a really great time. I personally really like this film. It's bright, creative, on a budget, but most of all, it's entertaining. And it's not just Godzilla and Megalon in this movie. You get Gigan and brand new robot superhero Jet Jaguar for a four-way kaiju fight that is anything but boring. As the Godzilla series went on, the villain kaiju would become more and more outlandish. And with this being the 13th film in the franchise, Megalon is no exception. His design is loosely based on stag beetles, but Megalon's design amps that up to 11. With large compound eyes, electric yellow patterns on his carapace, a lightning bolt horn, trapdoor jaws that shoot out napalm, wings for flying, and most importantly, twin spinning drill hands that when put together form a powerful drill capable of burrowing through the earth at speeds of Mach 3. He really is an everything in the kitchen sink kind of design, even more so than the previous movie's villain Gigan. I always love the fact that Megalon is paired up with Gigan in this movie. They're very similar in fighting styles and both have weapons for hands, which when winning a fight they clap together with such glee. They're just wonderful jerks. The character of Megalon does have a big fan following, and with such a cool design, Megalon has been made into many toys and model kits, and has appeared in all of the Pipeworks Godzilla fighting games as one of the best playable characters. Megalon even shows up, in a way, in the recent Godzilla Singular Point anime. I do wish Toho would take some risks now and again, and instead of revamping more well-known kaiju like Mothra, King Ghidorah, or Mechagodzilla for the 15th time, that they would bring back more obscure and outlandish ones like Megalon. He's already got such a great look and awesome abilities. Like, it just seems he's begging for a, a redesign, make him more realistic, or take him more otherworldly, like something. You already have a good foundation there. And with the rumors spreading about the next film in the MonsterVerse, Godzilla and Kong, I can't help but imagine a story that takes place in the hollow earth with the Cetopians as an ancient civilization hell-bent on conquering the surface with Megalon or maybe swarms of Megalons, thus forcing Godzilla and Kong to team up once again to take on this new global threat. Probably won't ever happen though, because it seems like too good of an idea. Well, I hope you enjoyed hearing me talk about the insufferable invertebrate known as Megalon, and I'd like to thank Aiden again for letting me be a part of this. Keep it creepy out there.